So today, uh, today our webinar uh, will be uh, related to the biomass combustion and uh, the, the the webinar will be uh, devoted to the biomass combustion techniques it, uh, at the beginning of the webinar i will tell you a little bit about the theory of biomass combustion and then we will go through different kind of techniques uh, for the for the for the combustion of the, the biomass and also the uh, main of the uh, webinar will be dedicated to the different types of uh, boilers which we can use for the biomass uh, combustion, mostly for the domestic heating and also mostly for the household applications, but also a little bit bigger boilers. And uh, during our webinar, we'd like to share also uh, our recent uh, informations about our uh, case studies which exist in our uh, BCOP partners. Uh, and also pilot installations and also uh, there will be a slide devoted to our uh, one of our tool which is already existing so uh, uh, at the beginning i would like to <clears throat> uh, introduce you with your the project because maybe not everybody was attending to the webinar one so the 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 project backup is in the relation to the uh, building the 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 rest cops and our task 3.2 is uh, dedicated to the uh, task in which we the main objectives is to share the knowledge and increase the knowledge about the uh, bioenergy how to uh, how to efficiently use biomass as a heat uh, heat sources and also what kind of equipment you can use for the for the for using the biomass in a, the most efficient way <clears throat> uh, as i also mentioned at the at the webinar one there is also a slide related uh, how many biomass is used worldwide or already for the heating application and how it is important especially for the european union countries right now <clears throat> uh, why we need so uh, so much uh, to even you use much more the biomass and mo more more efficiently to produce the to produce the heat uh, especially in those dynamic days in which we are right now in relation to the war on ukraine and uh, at the beginning as i mentioned before uh, i will introduce you with the definition of the rescop so as i mentioned uh, our project backup from Horizon 2020 is uh, um, mostly um, focused on the backups, so the rescops which we which are using the biomass for the uh, um, energy applications. Uh, and according to the Red Directive, um, uh, national and national law, um, the the rescop is a voluntary participation in autonomous and effectively controlled by stakeholders or members which are located in proximity of the renewable energy projects that own the development of the legal entity. So the shareholders are members of which are natural persons that can be also SMEs, local authorities, including municipalities. And the pri primary purpose for uh, establishing RESCOPs is to uh, provide environmental, economic and or social community benefits for the shareholders or members uh, for the local areas where it, it operates and uh, rather than financial profits and so our main uh, task is to build uh, as many pilot uh, projects of uh, backups in 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 Bicop project uh, we have four pilots in uh, five, four pilots um, cases in our in our uh, project in uh, poland in greece in in italy and in spain and uh, what is important in in sense of the heat production in rescops uh, we produce and consume and also store storage uh, and sell renewable energy including through renewable power purchase agreements we also share with the renewable energy communities renewable energy that is produced by the production units owned by the renewable energy community and the maintain the rights and obligations of the renewable energy community members uh, as customers there is also access to all sustainable energy market, both directly to the aggregation and non-discriminatory manner. So that's the main uh, definitions for the rescops. Now I will go slowly 
to our uh, new knowledge uh, knowledge exchange platform, uh, which is uh, which should be very useful for all the stakeholders and for the participators in the energy communities. Uh, as you can see, uh, we have created a knowledge exchange platform cap. This is a one-stop shop for the collaboration, information sharing, and knowledge exchange. Uh, a pan-European responsibility of knowledge, tools, and service in the field of community of bioenergy heating, as well as an international network of interest for all accessory of bioenergy technologies and energy communities. The air market environmental that connects supply chain stakeholders, the self-assessment tool that provides an evaluation methodology and tool for assessing the status of future potential of bioenergy communities, which is a very useful uh, tool, especially for those people which are already planning establishing uh, a, a rescop or a backup. The toolkit, uh, which is available online and it is a repository for existing open source tool and the observatory atlas of bioenergy communities cases, a digital space for fostering cross regional networking, dialogue and knowledge exchange among the co communities. So please uh, go to our uh, uh, tools, the resources and networking opportunities, which are available on that link, uh, backupcap.eu. Uh, I, stro I strongly encourage you to to use this platform and to use this knowledge exchange platform. It will be uh, in several in in upcoming months. It will be upgraded, upgraded uh, step by step, and uh, this will be a very useful tool for all the, all those people which are thinking about establishing the uh the the, the backups um, now we go back to our main uh, focus of our webinar so as i mentioned at the beginning <clears throat> the role of the biomass in today's world is growing the main problem with the biomass as a heat source is that it is redistributed through a big area and it means that it causes a many uh, many difficult issues in the relation to the uh, logistic chain so it has to be built a special in storage infrastructure always and uh, logistics uh, for the for the biomass to use this uh, heat source the most efficiently as is possible i could also give uh, the best examples i think in the european union countries uh, if people if any of you will have time to have a look on uh, countries which are very good examples for the um, using the most in the most effective way the biomass as the heat source i could say that it is sweden in my opinion and also austria those two countries uh, because uh, especially in sweden there is a very well developed uh uh, logistic chain for the um, transporting the woody biomass uh, to, due, to, due to the fact that they have a well-developed uh, railway uh, system and uh, this kind of transportation option is the cheapest uh, option for uh, transporting the biomass from the place where there's the, the woody biomass is scattered to the place in which the woody biomass is combust and in which we are producing the heat. I will go a little bit faster because this uh, information were also uh, during our webinar uh, one when we have the information about the biomass as a heat source. Uh, <clears throat> of course, there are many benefits by uh, which are uh, for using the biomass uh, as the heat source, uh, especially when we talk about the emission uh, emission levels. You can see on this table again, which I showed it on the webinar one, how much uh we can reduce the emission levels especially in sense of the carbon dioxide co2 it is 100 percent when we talk about the sulfur dioxide is 88 percent compared to the coal combustion is and uh, no2 it is usually on 32 percent this is the comparison between combustion the coal and combustion the 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 uh, woody pellets and also there is a huge uh, reduction in uh, carbon monoxide uh, and also in uh, particle matter uh, totally. It is 43%. Uh, 
Yeah, I'll go a little bit faster. Uh, I'll show on the previous webinar also uh, biorefinery concepts, uh, which is, I think, a uh, concept of the 21st century because uh, it is uh, showing different types of biomass feedstocks like trees, grasses, agriculture crops, agriculture residues, forest residues, animal wastes, and also municipality solid wastes, and how by the different uh, thermal and uh, chemical process in can be it or how it, the biomass can be trans um, converted to the other uh, kind of useful uh, byproducts and also uh, um, energy uh, types so by using enzymatic fermentation gas and liquid fermentation and hydrolysis and fermentation we can produce the biogas full of methane and hydrogen this is one of the case especially for the countries like Poland in which we should also uh, think about the green green gas like biomethane and uh, especially in those days when we when when the value chains for the gas uh, transportation and logistics were broken due to the fact that there is a war on Ukraine with Russians and but by this fact we have to look for the solutions uh, how to <clears throat> replace this uh, logistic chains of gas and how to be more uh, independent uh, and more green yes so i think biomethane production is one of the this very important case for which we should uh, focus as a european union countries okay uh, i will go a little bit faster show a little bit about the benefits uh, this is also a slide from the previous webinar which i was uh, showing what are the uh, benefits uh, outside using the bioenergy is uh, new jobs, local uh, creation for the local communities, activi uh, activation of lo local agriculture, education of residential use of renewable energy sources. Biomass also allows the, and widely available uh, for the renewable energy sources because it's not uh, in a correlation to the weather conditions like for the solar or wind energy. It's carbon neutral, as I mentioned before when I was showing the emission levels and is uh, able to reduce the over-reliance for fossil fuels. The biomass produ production and also revenue sources for manufacturers is also fosterizing and increasing the numbers of the uh, local uh, jobs, especially in the rural areas, which is very important. Uh, and some of the byproducts like ashes from the biomass can be used also later on as a fertilizers. Uh, introduction to worldwide population. This is uh, the, the scenario for the future. We uh, will be hitting uh, in 2050 with the 10 billions of uh, population worldwide. And it means that we will uh, increase the energy demand uh, from 63% up to 120%, which is a, a tremendous uh, number. And we will need the energy sources uh, uh, like biomass to be used more and more efficient and uh, uh, with the bigger number as well. So the role of the biomass, this was in the webinar number one. I will not focus on that that much, but you can see that 47% from renewable energy sources worldwide is coming from the biomass, which is a very important factor. And now we go to the combustion techniques and uh, short, uh, short theory about the combustion techniques. So basically, what is the combustion? A rapid chemical union with oxygen of element with exothermic heat of reaction. And uh, we have a different types of fuels for the combustion. Solid fuels is a typical wood, which is usually pre-dry before we combust it to 10% of the humidity content. But also there is uh, different types of boilers, which can use also a more uh, wet biomass, especially in the well-developed district heating systems like uh, like uh, like like the Swedish systems, for example, in Sweden, which can be uh, which can also use the heat uh, heat of uh, uh, changing the phase. So the condensation uh, heat can also be used for the district heating systems in Sweden. They do, they use also woody biomass, but usually we pre-dry the biomass before we combust it. Uh, coal and charcoal. And from the liquid uh, fuels, there are ga gasoline, diesel, and kerosene. Especially, there is a lot of research on kerosene, uh, which can be also produced from the green fu fuels like the biomass. And we have gases fuels, which I already mentioned when we are was talking about the scenarios for the biomethane production. 
Uh, <clears throat> and uh, the most important for the combustion elements, especially when you look on the char characteristic of specific woody biomass or the or the other biomass, it is the uh, ratio between the hydrogen amount to the carbon amount. This is very important uh, issue when you're looking from the chemical composition point of view. And if you want to, to have uh, a good uh, heat source. Complete combustion, this is a basics. Uh, incomplete combustion can also occur, uh, but uh, this is just to show you the the principles of the for the combustion. I will go a little bit faster about this. What is also important, um, theoretical air, so the maximum amount of the air which is required for the, oxid the oxidizing the reactants of combustion. What is also very important from the practical point of view when you look on the combustion is that it is very important to mix as well as possible the solid biomass with the air. So what is important from the practical point of view, uh, it is that the, the specific uh, biomass should be milled and greened to the specific uh, size and mix it as good as possible with the air. That's the key for uh, success for the efficient combustion, basically. Uh, <clears throat> combustion stages, so we have three, we can say that we have three main combustion stages. At uh, the first uh, level, the wood is heated uh, to evaporate and drive off moisture. Usually it is in the range of 110 up to 250 degree. Uh, most of the biomass uh, ignition starts around 260, 250 degrees. This is the second stage in which the wood then starts to, to be break down. The composition uh, is also break down, mostly lignin uh, cellulose and hemicellulose a little bit later. And then we have a third stage, usually the, with the temperature above 590 degree Celsius. This, this is the, the vapors burn and the high temperature must be maintained by the maximum efficient uh, in combustion. Following by the release of the volatility gases, uh, we have the remaining material is a charcoal, which is also burns at the temperature exceeding the 590 degrees so the so-called charcoal will, will, will be combust after we exceed 590 degrees. Uh, we have more and more uh, mm, uh, installations which are uh, <coughs> placed to the containers as small stage uh, small stage containers. <coughs> uh, this uh, is one of the example uh, of the, the small biomass uh, plant, uh, which is having 500 kilowatts uh, boiler. <clears throat> Usually the typical efficiency of the small biomass uh, plants are when you use the solid uh, woody biomass, like the wood chips or uh, like the pellets, is exceeding already 95% of efficiency, which is very high. <clears throat> And also, as I mentioned on the webinar one, there is a lot of different kind of uh, forms of uh, biomass. We can have a pellets, briquettes, chips, logs, and uh, cubes. Depends on what kind of uh, biomass and uh, what kind of types of boiler we are using and how much energy we also wanted to devote to the pretreatment system. It's always important when we look on the uh, logistic chain and pretreatment chain uh, from the technical and economical point of view, because this is not always reliable to, to use <coughs> uh, the, the pellets, because pellet production is also demanding a lot of energy, especially for the drying and for the com uh, compression system. Uh, of course, pellets has uh, a lot of advantages over the briquettes because it has a higher energy density. Briquettes uh, production is cheaper also compared to the pellets, but you cannot uh, use uh, such advanced automatic uh, systems to, to combust the pellets uh, like with the briquettes. Uh, there are also more advanced types of biomasses. There, are more, there is more and more uh, commercial stage uh, tests for uh, pre-treat the biomass before uh, combust like using the pyrology systems or torrefaction systems and then we can produce also even more caloric um, uh, uh, woody biomass or the agri biomass and we can produce so-called uh, black pellets this was also one of the 
<clears throat> uh, it was also on the previous webinar. I was explain I was explaining the benefits on uh, transportation systems of the uh, black pellets over the uh, over the typical white pellets for Canada case. <clears throat> we have different kind of uh, systems. This is a system which is showing how to use the <coughs> straw. Yes, in a typical balls. This is not a really efficient system in in sense of the uh, energy efficiency, but it's quite common to be used like that, especially for the farmers who are combusting the uh, the the straw. Uh, we have a system uh, when we use the biomass uh, boilers is usually. Uh, in European Union, there is a lot of producers from Austria and also from Germany, but I think the, one of the most famous, uh, the most uh, uh, efficient boilers and automatic systems are in the possession of the Austrian companies, which are selling a lot of uh, biomass boilers for the household applications. Uh, there is usually a space demand for the biomass uh, plant in house if you, if you would like to use, use the wood chips but of course you, most of the household applications and people are using the uh, woody pellets which doesn't need uh, such a big uh, space for the storage system of the woody pellets uh, so of course there are advantages and disadvantages of over the pellets and the and the wood chips. Wood chips are much uh, much cheaper as uh, here as as uh, as a uh, heat source, but you need to have in your household application a bigger space for the storage special storage system. Uh, then for the pellets, uh, of course you don't you don't need such a big space, but the pellets prices right now rises three times even in Poland. So the prices are around 600 euro right now per one ton. Uh, and uh, yeah, pellets are unfortunately more and more expensive, yes. So it's always at the end of the day, uh, very important uh, how much you would like to, to pay for your, uh, for your heat source. <clears throat> Many different kind of applications for the manual feed boilers for the log wood uh, biomass. They are automatically feed boilers for the wood chips. I show you previously a less developed system for the straw in which uh, you put the straw manually. There are dual fuel boilers. There are different kind of boilers in, even with the gasification chamber. Uh, when you gasify the, the, the gases uh, and you, you, you are having a post combustion for the gases, the very efficient boilers, but they are very expensive also from the Austrian companies. Uh, there is also a classification of the boilers. Of, you can classify in many many ways the, the biomass fuels by, um, uh, by the biomass fuels types like a wood fuel or not wood fuel. I already showed you the, the, the boilers for the straw. And uh, you also can use the manually fit system, which I also show you, and automatically fit systems like title stove, stoves, and the boilers for the pellets and wood chips. And this, which is even more advanced, is the dual fuel boiler systems. And uh, technology for the small scale biomass boilers this is a, a manually fit log wood. Uh, it is not so advanced, but of course, it's much cheaper than the systems with the automatic systems because usually the prices of the, this kind of boilers include uh, half of the price usually is just the, the boiler, a second, a second half is usually the automation system, which is more and more, even though those days more and more expensive. You have on this, on this, on this slide, you can see the storage room for the, for the biomass boilers, secondary combustion, Part. This is which, which, what I mentioned. Usually, uh, in the boilers, uh, uh, they also are the uh, gasification combustion uh, chambers. This case is a cyclone combustion chamber. Uh, so this is uh, looks like a very efficient uh, type of boiler. Uh, microprocessor controller and suction of the smoke when the operating door. And you also have uh, different types of uh, automation systems. This type is uh, with the manual feedlock. 
Uh, ok. Uh, typical uh, boiler system with the retort furnace, uh, only in the combination with the underfitted burners. You see on the slide what the, is the principle of the typical uh, retort furnace. You can have un underfit burner or you can have horizontal fit burners. Uh, it's all about the type of uh, feeding system and also mixing system between the 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 the, the air and the and, and the biomass. All those three uh, systems has ha has uh, advantages and disadvantages. Uh, um, when we talk about the feeding system and also the the types of combustion chambers, we have a step grade, hin grade system, and also fixed grade system. So there is uh, many types of different uh, applications for the wood pellet. Uh, automation systems for the uh, over feed wood pellet uh, explanation. So this is a typical uh, pellet boiler. Uh, which is uh, include uh, full container stock screw primary combustion chamber this is number three is this place and then secondary air addition which is very important in sense of the efficiency of the combustion and of course the main issue is the heat exchanger section and uh, bottom ash container which is also very important because there are different types of uh, ash containers and systems for the ash utilization manual and also automatic. Uh, another type of pellet uh, boiler, it is a uh, boiler with the, for the wood pellets again. Uh, market introduction in 2004, so you can see they are very long on the market. Uh, the What is changing right now for the pellets, uh, pellets boiler is just that they are a little bit uh, less attractive compared to the wood chips boiler which are now having also a high efficiencies and this is basically due to the fact that the substrates are uh, becoming very expensive in sense of the woody pellets so wood chips are more becoming are now right now more more and more and more attractive yes but of course uh, when you use the wood pellet boiler it is convenient that you don't spend so much uh, time because you put usually for one week the pellet system uh, for the for, uh, you feed with the pellets uh, your system and you don't need to look to your uh, boiler. This is different with the wood chips because usually you need to put the wood chips every day to feed your uh, system for your household application. Uh, there are fuel boilers. Uh, this is what we mentioned also in the different types of boilers. This is a very good uh, solution in sense of the combustion technique. Uh, innovative rotary grade furnace, uh, also innovative Cyton combustion chamber, uh, and also uh, you can use uh, uh, wood chips with a high humidity content, up to 50% of the uh, humidity content of the moisture content. So this is advantages over the wood pellets. And there is a nominal power from 15 to 300 kilowatts. So this is a small scale boiler and also medium scale boiler, which can be used also for the applications like school uh, or even to the bigger um, uh, household applications. Uh, because you can place not one boil this type of boiler, but also like five in a row. So then you can go even to 1.5 megawatt with the system. Uh, there is also non-wood fuel system, as an example, uh, using the power corn. Uh, this is a furnace uh, door step grade uh, systems for just basically for the combustion of uh, agri agri fuels. Uh, uh, let's say intermediate uh, solutions in between the automatic and uh, manual systems. This is a semi-automatic residential biomass boiler. So there is many applications on the uh, on the market available. You can always also come back to the, our webinar presentation, which will be placed on our website, to have a look on this kind of systems. And also during our uh, webinar, I wanted to give you a short introduction to the next webinars for the heating systems theory, in which we will talk about the direct heating and indirect heating. As I mentioned before, there are several European Union countries in which the indirect heating systems and also uh, 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 
heating systems are were developed like Sweden, Poland, uh, but there is many countries in which uh, the indirect heating systems doesn't exist at all, like Ireland. Yes, there is only a one city in which they have uh, using the indirect heating system is Dublin. Uh, and also there are countries like Spain and Portugal in which because of the weather conditions, they don't use indirect heating systems at a, such a big level like countries in which the climate is more hard to Poland, for example. So uh, indirect heating uh, theory, this is what we were talking about all the time and that's uh, and and uh, and which I show you the typical biomass con uh, container system in which basically we directly combust the biomass and we use in the household application our uh, heat from the biomass. And for the indirect heating system, we have usually a bigger boiler from 500 kilowatts up to, up to even 30 megawatts. And we we combust the biomass and then we produce the heat in which we uh, introduce through the heating system. Uh, so that's the indirect heating systems. Uh, this is also one of the type of the biomass boiler which can be used uh, for the indirect heating systems with a uh, rotary furnace. Uh, there are many advantages for this great stove system and also disadvantages. Uh, the advantages is a simple design, easy use, low investment and operation costs. But at the uh, other side, there is a problems with firing the grate, burning time is quite long and low energy efficiency, yes. So it's always a matter of how much you would like to invest at the beginning and how much money you, should, you would like to spend during the operation of your system, yes. So that's the, one of the examples which you can be uh, considering if you would like to invest in the biomass plant. Uh, pellets, we have been uh, uh, talking about the heating system for the pellets. Uh, for the direct heating systems, we can also show you the typical uh, system, which is using a water heater and stack economizer combined. Uh, economizer is always uh, bringing the efficiency up of the overall system. And uh, but always, uh, if you would like to have economizer, then you need to spend uh, like 10% more for your installation. Uh, High efficiency water heater for space heating. So this is already a uh, indirect system in which you, you could also um, uh, have a small uh, heating system. Solution for a uh, hotel is for some small uh, pensions uh, when you have more more people than for the typical household application. Uh, direct contact water economizer. You the advantages of the, this kind of economizer is direct contact, natural gas fired, with, and you can heat the water designed to the heat water to the temperature up to 85 degree. Uh, it's good, especially in the solutions when you would like to storage the heat for the some uh, for some time. Condensing stack economizer, another solution for the direct contact condensing stack economizer, also very good solution. Uh, what are the case studies for this? The implementation was done uh, at Dial Corporation. This is an example from Chicago, United States, uh, and it is producing the steam. Uh, so it is uh, usually, especially for the installation to which you have the steam, uh, is good to preheat the steam also by using the extra heat and in the economizer. It is also increasing the efficiency of the overall system. The payback is 15 years in that case. Uh, indirect heating system, the theory, this is wh what I was uh, explaining you. The indirect systems and the heat systems are mostly used in the countries in which there is uh, big cities and also the climate is uh, hard, like the strong winters. Um, most of the well-developed uh, heating systems are exist in the East European countries, but also in Germany, uh, in uh, in Poland, in Sweden, in uh, Finland. So that's the most uh, common uh, countries in which this this the, the the indirect heating systems are used on a daily basis. And the direct heating systems you can find much more in Italy, Spain, Portugal. Uh, but also in the South countries like uh, Austria and uh, all Yugoslavian countries. 
But the concept, as I mentioned before, is that you have a bigger uh, scale boiler from 500 kilowatts up to 50 megawatts, and you have a well-established uh, uh, network for the district heating. Uh, of course, the the initial cost will be always higher than for the direct heating systems because you have to uh, spend a lot of money for the district heating networks. Yes, so that's one of the advantages. Uh, of the direct heating systems. At the beginning, you don't need to spend so much money for the investment, especially in the infrastructure for the di uh, for the district heating systems. Yeah. What is the main composition of the district heating uh, components? Is the general plan, distribution, piping network, substitution, control, and management. You can also see on the machine uh, machine levels. Uh, as an example, you have the, the generation, generation plant, storage areas, feeding systems, and thermal power plant. But what I wanted to show you, uh, this is a main equipment, fixed grade boiler, for example. This I already explained you on the previous slides. I wanted to go to the more specific solutions, especially like that. This is a solution for the uh, boiler, especially for the agri-biomass, yes. Uh, it's a very good solution from Sweden again. Uh, how do you can use the the straw for this kind of boiler uh, with the speci special design vibrating grate? This vibrating grate is a very unique uh, solution. Uh, it's a part of the combustion air is fed into the furnace from the bottom of the grate, which is very good because it's pre drying the, the, the straw. And further, the combustion air is supplied to the furnace through the nozzles located above the grate. So this is a very nice solution in sense uh, of the uh, farmers applications and also in the rural areas where the straw is uh, available close to the uh, to the CHP plant uh, run on the biomass. I strongly encourage you to read a little bit more about this vibrating grate for straw application is a very nice solution. You can see the picture in 3D of this vibrating grate. And uh, direct photograph uh, photography from this uh, system. Uh, air distributed system to optimize the combustion process evidently on the grate and vibration on the grate inhibits the formation of the large large slag particles uh, which are not recommended for the burning the straw yes and the wood waste so because this agricultural waste like the straw is much more problematic in sense of the combustion compared to the woody biomass um Going back to the district heating systems, this is a typical network and distributing piping network, which, is, as I mentioned before, cause a lot of costs at the beginning of your investment. Uh, technology used in the district heating systems is substations, heat exchanger systems, and then the, you, you need to have a very well prepared control and management systems. Also, from the uh, uh, exploitation point of view, you also will need to have uh, a lot of investment for the um, uh, systems, especially like for the SCADA system. And there is a lot of cost, especially for the out outside components for which you will need to, to pay for the exploitation and service system. So I think, and I strongly recommend, if anybody is thinking about even a small district heating system, is uh, to, to have uh, your own IT solution also for the uh, automation system, because then you will not need to to pay uh, extra cost for the for the external companies, which are usually a big companies like I don't know, uh, ABB or uh, General Electric and uh, Siemens and those of the, the companies. Usually they are quite expensive in sense of the exploitation uh, for the district heating systems. Uh, some successful uh, information is from our Italian uh, partners from uh, Tirano. Uh, this is uh, Lombardia region, province Sondrio. The last uh, meeting of our backup uh, took place in Tirano. Uh, there is a biomass uh, station which was founded in 1997 and operates three plants located in the municipality of Tirano, uh, Santa Catarina Velfor, with uh, approximately 1,250 customers. And uh, you can see as a successful case uh, study of this biomass district heating, uh, you can see uh, installed capacity of this uh, system is, is, is 20 megawatts thermal power and 1.1 uh, megawatts of electrical power. 
as I mentioned before, the number of connections is 787, customers is more than 1000, and uh, grids in kilometers is already 34 kilometers, biomass consumption is 24,000 uh, ton, and flue gas treatment systems, because I thought was showing the theory, in this case they're using multi-cyclone and uh, back filters on the cogeneration line, uh, and they also use for the multi for the multi cyclone electrostatic uh, precipitators. You know, this is very nice solution because it's a small and it uh, doesn't demand a big space. Um, and also some numbers like the CO2 reduction per year and the capex in a million of euro plant plus the network is 27.8 million. Uh, so this is. A uh, one of the solution uh, which is used by our Italian partners, uh, it is a good study case. Uh, you can have a look to this study case. Uh, we will be uh, sh sharing this presentation on our website. There are another study cases in Greece, municipality of Florina, and this is background the district heating system. Uh, which is in operation in 2005, heat production derived from the lightning power plant. Uh, since 2020, it operates on two new biomass boilers, two types, 15 megawatts. So this is a quite big uh, thermal power output and 70% of the biomass and another 30% is coming from the lignit as a fuel mixture. So this case is also very interesting to have a look, especially when you look how the, the numbers of connections were increased since the last 20 years. Kilometers grid in totally is already 77 kilometers. OK, uh, a few numbers about the biomass supply chain for the Greeks case. Uh, you can see how different types of biomass they use. Wood chips, sawmills residues, sunflower pellets and corn residues and also the lignite. And uh, you can see on the photography how big is already the district heating systems, which I predict that it will be even more uh, developed in upcoming years. Mm. OK, to this study case, you can also come back after uh, we will uh, put the, our webinar uh, 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 online. There are several challenges always, a policy and regulation frameworks and feedstock availability. You can also have a look on that, uh, how how the people are already sharing with their experience of having this kind of solutions. And uh, lessons learned, equipment selection is very important at the beginning. As I mentioned before, that's our main focus during our webinar. You always need to have equipment of the, for the biomass for the supply chain, especially for the district heating plant, which is crucial, yes. So that's the experience from the Greeks uh, solution. Right selection increase the performance and reduce the operation costs. So uh, you have to use wisely uh, the the initial money which you have, but you always need to think about the exploitation and service systems. Um, what is also very important from the Greeks case is that you always need to secure your supply chains. So the identification of the available biomass is crucial for the viability and operation outcome for the distant heating units. OK, we slowly will be finishing the last system, which I strongly encourage you to have a look. It is our um, Polish case, Zwochev. It is a nice solution using a different types of um, uh, systems with photovoltaics and uh, two two types uh, of boilers one 1000 kilowatts so one megawatt um, and double system plus 800 kilowatts boiler and also they use a solar collectors in the area of 122 square meters uh, this is a small system with a very well developed instrumentation and control uh, unit uh, some solutions in spain uh, a small uh, district heating system biomass boiler on the Hotel Barcelona Bombadillo, uh, which is also using, uh, uh, as I mentioned before, Austrian boiler, which is very famous Hertz company. Uh, and the fuel, which is quite interesting, but it's, it is locally available, is olive pit. Uh, savings by using the energy cost is 45 percent. And the last slide is a biomass gasification unit, but I will not focus on that system because it is quite a uh, new systems. Uh, gasification is still under the uh, development. 
uh, gasification units usually haven't had a lot of problems, especially with the cleaning the uh, the systems because um, during gasification process we have a lot of tar formations and it is crucial to clean the gas before it will be combusted in the diesel engine. Okay, thank you for your attention. I will start right now a small uh, discussion section. If anybody would like to give me some question, I'm open uh, to to talk about what we have been uh, talking today about. Uh, so please uh, raise the hand and I will try to answer your questions. Simon, I have a question. Okay, there is uh, my friend from Gdańsk, Dr. Xaver Kuligowski. Yes. Simon, tell me, tell me what are your uh, personal thoughts about biomass combustion, uh, coal combustion with uh, coal? Uh, how does this reflect to you in term in terms of uh, meeting the national targets? Uh, I mean, sometimes countries are including these uh, processes to to prove that they are using biomass, but actually the co-combustion is a controversial aspect, in my opinion. What is your opinion on that? Thank you for this very important question. Uh, during our presentation, I was nearly not showing the co-firing systems because usually the co-firing systems are uh, in the pos when uh, are in in the big systems like up uh, above 50 megawatts up to 500 megawatt systems. Uh, to be honest, I also think that is quite controversial, even though my PhD thesis was devoted to that problem. Uh, especially due to the fact that if you would like to do the co-combustion co system, it is a very uh, crucial to have the, like for the district heating systems in our representation, to have a reliable supply chain and also a lot of uh, biomass available close to the uh, existing co-fired plant and not every co-fired uh, systems were originally designed for co-firing biomass with the coal. Uh, so from the technical point of view, it is crucial to have a uh, woody biomass uh, and cheap woody biomass available, so basically forests in front of the in front of the in front of the uh, uh, co-fired power station. And uh, you also need to prepare the biomass before the co-firing system, uh, uh, before you will do the co-firing process. Especially, uh, you will have uh, uh, huge problems with the uh, ash melting temperatures between the coal and the and, and the biomass. So those two factors are very important on the logistic point of view and also on the uh, combustion point of view. Uh, it is very crucial to have, first of all, a lot of amount, a big amount of biomass uh, and cheap available. And secondly, the operation system, so uh, the good pre pre preparation uh, process needs to be applied for the co-firing system. But I think Łukasz Niedźwiecki, a um, doctor from uh, Wrocław University of Technology, just raised his hand and he's also a specialist for co-firing system. I think it seems that he would like to join our discussion. Uh, yes, thank, Łukasz. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, not a doctor yet. I'm still working on it. Uh, but my question is uh, also related to your area of uh, expertise, uh, which is uh, valorization of uh, uh, biomass. Uh, and uh, regarding the combustion systems, uh, how does it look in terms of uh, fuel flexibility? Let's say if at some point uh, the market switches over to torrefied biomass, for example, how flexible those systems are and do you think would they need any adjustments? Yes, uh, this is a very good uh, question. This is basically my field of expertise and in my opinion, <clears throat> by the pretreatment of the biomass using the torrefaction units, you always have more homogenic, uh, homogenic fuel. 
uh, because I didn't speak during our webinar too much about the how different are the different uh, types of biomass, yes, in sense of the combustion systems. I was just showing a lot of types of biomass systems in which you combust the biomass. And this is the reason why, because uh, every of this boiler is usually devoted to the specific types of biomass. In sense of the torrefaction systems, there is a lot of things still to do, as you already know, especially in sense of the uh, risks, risks of this kind of uh, <clears throat> uh, biorefinery stations in which you are valorizing the torrefied biomass. Uh, I also know that you work a lot of uh, this uh, kind of uh, risk analysis, especially in sense of the explosions and also self combustion. So, uh, in my opinion, uh, more and more countries are investing in torrefaction. Big countries like um, America, Canada, country like uh, Estonia, which is full of biomass, and Sweden, and also Austrians, which are in possession of patents for the torrefaction systems. But there is needs to be done still a lot, especially in the sense of R&D and also in sense of legislation. I don't know if I could answer you by this <laughs> short communication, but it would be necessary even I feel to devote a special webinar just to the uh, valorization process like torrefaction to give you the brief uh, outcome for your comment. Uh, would be would, you, be very, uh, would be actually very interesting to uh, uh, to hear that kind of webinar. So uh, if, if you do that in the future, please count me in as one of participants. Of course, thank you. Okay, Great thank you very much. Okay, uh, do we have uh, more questions at this stage? I don't see Xaveri. Yes, yes, Xaveri. Yes, Simon, one more question regarding because the your answer um, somehow uh, resulted in another question in my head. Um, so if you talk mostly about woody woody biomass, it has much more lignocellulose than uh, than straw or agricultural waste, for example. So according I mean, according to you as um, as a supporter of thermal uh, thermal processes, uh, where do you think should be the borderline between how I mean, where at which level maybe of I would say maybe this could be the lignocellulose uh, um, content and which level of this uh, at this lignocellulose uh, content uh, the biomass should go either to biorefinery or to combustion because here in our institute in Gdańsk uh, we are trying we are having some positive uh, attempt of uh, producing bioethanol from lignocellulose lignocellulose rich biomass like straw hay leaves or some food waste so i mean in my in my opinion whatever is wet let's say so it's it's poor quality fuel should maybe go to the biorefinery and whatever is is initially dry then it should go for combustion but what i mean what do you think about it I do not agree exactly with this kind of classification which you just says because I little bit uh, I know a little bit more about different kind of uh, thermochemical processing of the biomass. You don't need always to have uh, a torrefaction system uh, or process uh, when you have only dry biomass. Of course, you can do the torrefaction uh, process valorization of the biomass when you have a pre-dry biomass but also when you have a wet biomass you can uh, or wet substrate uh, like lignocellulosic uh, uh, sludges from the lignocellulosic biorefinery bio plant which is producing a paper or paper sludge biorefinery system uh, you can use for example hydrothermal carbonization yes which is a uh, very good solution for the wet types of uh, substrate but it use higher uh, higher uh, pressure uh, for the treatment system. So I don't know if I answer your question, but I think that there is also different options than also yes, 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 yes. It's not yes. the only option. It's not the only option. Yeah, I'm not. I, I I don't want to like make this strict line that whatever is wet goes for fermentation, but but uh, not necessarily. I mean, it's much more waste than only fermentation, as you mentioned. Uh, so it 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 could like the thermal process. It could also be applied for the wet biomass. That's that's what. Yes. I agree. I agree also. Thank you. OK, thank you very much, uh, Xaveri. We are s slowly finishing our uh, webinar. I would like to thank to all of you for the attendance 
and already invite you for the oh Yanis. Yes, Yanis. Good morning, Simon. Uh, Good morning. Thank you for the, the the lovely webinar. Just to remind everyone that uh, next week this webinar will be posted in our cap. I put uh, the link uh, at the chat. And also, if you don't mind, uh, I presume we can open a thread at our forum where uh, attendants can pose more questions to you and you can have the time to, to get back if you don't have any objection about that. Uh, I think it would be great. There is a yes. lot, a lot to, to to be seen. Great day. Thank you so much. Thank you, Anis, and uh, thanks a lot to all the participants. And I would like to thank you and wish you a good day. And we will see on our next webinar, and also we'll see on our cap uh, tool, uh, under which I will be trying to answer you your questions as as, as good as possible. <laughs> thank you very much. Greetings.